If you've been following Classics World, then you'll already know all about the convoluted history of the ownership of the Rolls-Royce and Bentley brands. But where does that leave owners today? Are these easy cars to live with? Can you get parts easily? Where do you get parts from? We wanted to find out a little bit more, so we came to Wimbledon to the headquarters of IntroCar, which can pretty much sort you out for anything you might need for a post-war Rolls or Bentley, such as this rather nice 79 Shadow, which uh, specialist Nigel Sandler has brought along for us, and we'll be uh, enjoying a drive-in in a little bit. This is my uh, 1979 Silver Shadow. Um, I bought this car when I was 30. When I left school, um, I was actually working on um, 1979 Silver Shadow. It was always my dream to own one. And when I turned 30, um, I inherited a bit of money and I bought this lovely car. It was a pretty average sort of shadow, if that makes sense. Um, it had a vinyl roof on it. Um, it had a piston picked up in the engine. So it needed some work, and I knew that before I bought it. Yeah, my, it was always gonna be my love, my passion to get into this car and restore it. My best car in the world, if that makes sense. I took it apart in my garage. Um, I spent about 600 hours restoring it and I took it to the RREC Concours in 96 and I won the, uh, the Shadow class and I won, also won the best car in show. I've done over 30,000 miles in this car. Um, we've been to France in it, we use it, we, yeah, we use it um, all the time sort of thing. I absolutely love it. You can just imagine a, um, a, a young lad being 16 years old, being able to you know, work on these cars brand new. I'm quite conscious about where I'll park it because <laughs> it's very straight down the sides, much to my wife's annoyance. The last Shadow I drove was a Shadow 1. And this is really very different. When they moved to the Shadow 2, the biggest change was the swapping of the steering box for a steering rack, and it's changed the whole character of the car. One of the specialists said to me once that the Shadow 1 is like controlling a boat, whereas the Shadow 2 is more of a car. Perhaps that's a bit of an insult to the Shadow 1, but this does feel so very different. It feels more like a spirit, actually, and it's surprisingly modern to drive. Along with the mechanical changes, the interior also got a bit of an update. The old Chippendale dashboard, which is the nickname given to the older style wooden dashboard with the circular instruments, was swapped for a new split level dashboard, which does look a lot more modern, but it also offered Rolls-Royce the chance to offer proper split level air conditioning. Um, it's one of the first cars that was offered with proper climate control. And I must say it's working very well in this particular car. But as I said, it is a particularly nice example. I think there's quite different owners uh, really for, for these cars. I think if you get an early one. That's really for, I think, the real enthusiast who wants the original style of Shadow. That, this is Silver Shadow 2, which really makes it more modern feeling. These are very drivable, uh, you know, great lock. Uh, although they're quite a large car, I think they're incredibly manoeuvrable. This is your first Shadow. I would be tempted to say, try and, try and buy a Silver Shadow 2. They've got loads of personality. It doesn't really feel like a machine. You've got to choose the car for the personality you want. Rolls-Royce ownerships made it ever easier with industry specialists dedicated to the parts aftermarket. IntroCar is committed to the remanufacture of parts which are no longer available and has brought over 6,000 Rolls-Royce and Bentley parts to market as part of their prestige parts range, aiming to meet or exceed original manufacturer specifications. This makes keeping cars roadworthy far easier, as the term no longer available is less frequently heard. This particular car has got the regular six and three quarters V8, normally aspirated of course, with a couple of SU carburettors, and like the rest of the car, it's obviously nicely set up and it really does feel lovely. Ever so smooth and it's surprisingly sprightly as well. It doesn't feel like a breathless sort of car and it is heavy, but you just give it a little bit of a tickle and it, it gathers pace really quite nicely. It's not a car to go really fast in. It's not a car with searing acceleration, but it's got enough go to be quite good fun. It remains ever so refined. It's quite an imposing car but it's really not that physically very big. And if you're driving it in traffic, I've always found it's really quite an easy car to place. You can see the tops of the wings and you can obviously see the uh, flying lady there on the, on the prow, but it's quite easy to thread through city traffic and squeeze into gaps. And it's actually a little bit smaller than a transit van, I think. 
Well, a lot of people today are obviously very, very in love with the look of a Silver Shadow, if that makes sense, with the chrome bumpers. But from a driving perspective, I think a Shadow 2 is a better car. Um, it has slightly firmer suspension, and obviously with the rack and pinion steering and the modifications to the air conditioning. If you're going to buy a house, a house is always about location, location, location. With a Rolls or a Bentley, it's always specifications. So, uh, like this car's got a leather headlining in it, it's got a leather top roll. Just try and buy as, as good a car as you can you're always going to say I'm going to spend six or eight grand and you're probably going to need to spend ten to get something good the hydraulics and the brakes are quite complicated so again you need to you need to seek advice before you start getting stuck in rear hub nuts again 475 pounds feet the bottom ball joints at the front they're 300 pounds feet so again you know you, you need some quite heavy um, equipment to get involved I mean a Rolls Royce or a Bentley out there they are the best car in the world and there's nothing better than having that feeling about sitting in the car and actually driving it and with the masker in front of you. It's a feeling, it's a heartbeat, it's the way the car actually makes you feel when you go out in it. They're magnificent cars, they've stood the test of time. I think everyone somewhere deep down in their heart would aspire to owning a Rolls Royce or a Bentley which is always known as the best car in the world. The ride quality on these cars is really tremendous and it's in a different level. It's something like a hydraulic Citroen in their heyday. It's got a majestic quality to it and we're just going over a, a, a really noticeable dip here but we've barely noticed it. It just glides over and it, it isn't long in its shadow before you forget the sort of enormous responsibility of driving someone's Concours winning rebuild and you just got one finger on the wheel and that's how you drive it, gently refined and it just eases along. You've only got to go a couple of miles before you realise just what these cars were all about. Of course, this was the first Rolls-Royce to use a monocoque body shell, so you'd expect a level of refinement above the old sh separate chassis cars. Um, it does feel really quite modern in its general structure and composition. And of course, uh, this basic structure lived on right until the end of the spirit-based cars, so it really did last Rolls-Royce very well. As Nigel says, this isn't a car for outright speed. It's not a car to go herring across Europe in top speed on the motorway but it's a lovely car to just arrive at your destination in entirely relaxed and unflustered. I think Nigel said she's an old lady and it just feels a very civilized way to travel. Back in the day, the Shadow would have been compared to, well, very little else really. Cadillac was uh, a bit of an odd choice, but you'd have been looking at alternatives like the Daimler 66, the, the top end um, V12 Jaguar. But really, when you get behind the wheel of the Shadow, it's just so very different and you can see why the Jaguar doesn't really come close. And, nor does the shadow come close to the Jaguar's appeal. It, it really is in a class of its own. Of course, these cars were famously advertised as the best car in the world, and after driving a really nice shadow too like this, you can see why.